so far as we've been working with CSS, we've been using inline styles. And this web page, which looks like this, is made using all inline styles. So if I go back to my gedit window, I see an inline style here, 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 and here. And all of these start with the style tag. Sorry, not the style tag, the style attribute. So inside my opening body tag, I have a style attribute and all the other opening tags. So for my H1, the opening tag has your style attribute and so on. This is called inline. Today what we're going to do is transfer our inline CSS into embedded CSS. And the reason this is a good thing to do is that it, it makes our code look a little bit neater. You'll notice that right now my tags, they just look a little jumbled. There's just so much going on here and for someone to glance at this page it just immediately looks kind of confusing so embedded CSS we're gonna do a Google search to try to find out a little bit more about it embedded CSS when you search that a lot of web pages will come up I'm usually looking for the one that is the W3 schools and when I click on CSS embedded CSS um, it talks about some things here. It says external style sheet, um, and that's the first example here. And then it says internal style sheet and inline style. Notice it doesn't say embedded. So the first thing I want you to realize is that internal style sheet is another name for embedded CSS. And going down to that example, here's what it looks like. Notice they've given you your head tags, head, head. And if I go back to mine, really it's it's the same here, head, head for there. So I'm going to hit enter to just give myself another space. And then like they have, they have this style tag. And normally I would just copy and paste, but I'm going to type this out. It looks like this, style. And then it says type equals text slash CSS. Make sure to close that style tag. So instead of having all these separate style attributes, I'm, I'm actually going to have a style tag and it's going to go in the head section. Now this is where it gets a little bit tricky because you'll notice that a lot of these styles weren't applied to everything. For example, this style right here for the H1, it says color white. This little CSS rule doesn't turn all of the color white on the entire page, just the H1. So if I look back at the page, it only turned this part white. What I want to do, sorry, let me get back to gedit, is I want to somehow specify that I only want the H1 to turn white, but I want to do it from inside the style tag. So here's what I do. I type H1, and I go and open curly bracket, and I do a closing curly bracket. And if I go back to W3Schools, I can see that they did something something similar. They didn't have an H1 tag, but they had these other tags. So inside my curly braces, I'm going to start specifying my CSS rules. And the way I do it is one per line, just because that really helps me stay organized. So I'm going to type color, colon, white, semicolon at the end of the line. If I want to have another CSS rule, I can do, for example, font size, 4,000%. So in this one, I'll just copy and paste. OK, I can actually get rid of this H1 now. The not the whole H1, just the style attribute. Save it and go back and refresh the page. And notice it looks exactly the same. Liam Neeson is still just loading here, but he'll be there. OK, I can do the same for all of these other style attributes. I want to move them up to my embedded CSS section up here. So I'm going to hit enter after this. And if I want to do the style for the body, well, you can probably guess what that's going to look like. Instead of H1, it'll look like body. And then have your open and closing curly brackets. I put those in right away just so I don't forget. OK, and I can start copying and pasting some of this code. So this part that sets the background color, and I use, and I use control X to cut, and then paste to control V. On the next line down, I'll get the next code in. Um, text align center, like
like that. And font family Arial. Now notice that I didn't have a semicolon at the end of this one. Um, it doesn't. It'd probably work either way, but just put it in there. Um, at the end of each line or each rule, put a semicolon. Now I can get rid of this style attribute, the body tag. I don't need it anymore. And you can already notice that my HTML is starting to look a lot more readable. Everything in the body section much more readable. So I'm going to do the same thing for my style tag, for my style attribute here in the paragraph. Um, this time I'm just going to copy the whole thing and go down a couple lines and paste it. Now this is going to be for a paragraph. So type P and then have your open bracket. Separate these out on their separate lines. So I've got my color, font style, and font weight. And make sure you put in that closing curly bracket. And I'm going to take that back to be in line with the P. Um, it doesn't necessarily matter. It just I think it looks the most organized this way. So looking at this, I see all my style. It's very nice, neat, and organized. I've got my styles for my H1, my body, and my paragraph. And down here, I don't have any style information at all. Everything looks a lot neater, in my opinion, and I think you'd agree. And it turns out that neatness is very, very helpful when you start to get to bigger web pages.